Hello, this is Daniel from Samdance Couch. In this video, I will be looking at the Ugreen Thunderbolt 5 NVMe SSD case in combination with a Samsung 990 Pro 4TB SSD and my Mac Mini M4 Pro to find out how much speed this Thunderbolt 5 combo can deliver. I will connect it to my M2 MacBook Air and even my M1 iPad Pro to see how it fares with a USB 4 connector. So let's find out. My main workstation is an Apple Mac Mini that features not only an M4 Pro chip, it also has three Thunderbolt 5 ports, which promises transfer speeds exceeding the speed of the internal SSD, if you have the right equipment. And since internal SSD prices are not reasonable by any measurement, using an external drive that can even be faster than the internal one seems like the perfect way to go. So at Amazon Prime Day, I pulled the trigger and got the Ugreen Thunderbolt 5 case for around 190 euro, which is still expensive, but better than the standard price of 260 euro. Though if you keep checking, this case does go on sale quite often. I also bought the Samsung 990 Pro in its 4TB version, since it is highly rated for high speeds and low temperatures. Here I am, unpacking the Ugreen Thunderbolt 5 case. It can host PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSDs up to the size of 8TB. It is made out of an aluminum alloy, which helps with the heat distribution, and also features a little fan, which will only turn on if it's needed to keep the SSD at a steady temperature and help avoid thermal throttling, which else would slow down the drive dramatically. The case not only comes with a sleeve, it also comes with a screwdriver, a thermal pad and a Thunderbolt 5 cable. And the cable is even at a decent length of around 75 cm. I'm going to use a different thermal pad though, since I already know that the Samsung SSD is going to be a little thicker and the thermal pad would be a little too thick when you try to close the top case on it. So I also ordered this pack of multiple thermal pads with different thicknesses. The case also comes with a rubber material sleeve, which reminds me of the Wii Remote with its rubber sleeve. It helps prevent the case from getting damaged if you should want to carry it around with you. For installation of the SSD, you need to take it off though, and I will mainly use this case with the sleeve off anyways. This is the Samsung 990 Pro NVMe SSD in its 4TB configuration. It is one of the fastest PCIe 4.0 NVMe's on the market right now. And since I am using Thunderbolt 5, speed was what I was aiming for, for my setup. The U-Green case opens up by just unscrewing a single screw with a supplied screwdriver. The lid itself slides out and is also part of the cooling. The inside hosts a single NVMe PCIe 4.0 slot. To attach my new SSD into the case, all that is left now is to take out the mounting screw and we are ready to slide our SSD in. At an angle, sliding the SSD in and a gentle press downwards and putting the mounting screw back in is done pretty easily. There's just one important step left that we have to do and that is installing a thermal pad. For the SSD to receive the full potential of the cooling, a thermal pad has to be installed on top of the SSD. Also, the thermal pad needs to touch the lid of the case to be able to transfer the heat. There is one problem though. The thermal pad that comes with the U-Green case is a little too thick for my SSD. It is actually so thick that if I force the pad on top of the SSD and try to close the lid of the case, it is actually bending the contacts down a little bit, causing the SSD to stop functioning. Thankfully, I knew about this before and bought myself a set of thermal pads that comes with pads at different thicknesses. Comparing both thermal pads, 
you can see how much thinner my new thermal pad is. But it's still thick enough that when installed, it is going to touch the lid of the case, which is what we want. The original thermal pad has a thickness of 2mm, and the one I chose instead is a thermal pad of 1mm thickness. The thermal pad has a sticker glue on both sides, and I just need to remove the protection folio on one side to attach it on top of the SSD. And yes, in case you were wondering, like I did myself, it is recommended to leave the sticker on the SSD itself, because it helps with the cooling as well. Once the thermal pad is perfectly placed on top of the SSD, I can remove the other protective folio of the pad and then slowly lower the lid of the case on top. The screw for the lid goes back in as I can feel the lid gently pushing down on the thermal pad, making perfect contact, giving us maximum cooling in the near future once I have it connected and running. The supplied Thunderbolt 5 cable is connected and I'm ready to go hook it up to my M4 Pro Mac Mini. To use the SSD under Mac OS X, it is recommended to format the drive as APFS, which is what I'm going to do right now. And after a few seconds, my new Thunderbolt 5 drive is ready to go and show its muscles. It is time to benchmark my new drive. I'm using Blackmagic Design's free disk speed test that you can get on the Apple App Store. I'm using the 5GB stress test for all my benchmarks. On my M4 Pro Mac Mini, I'm getting the power of Thunderbolt 5, which should give me the maximum speed the Samsung 990 Pro can deliver. And after a few runs, I'm getting around 6.4GB per second write speed and 5.8GB per second read speed. That is just amazing to have for an external SSD. Let's see how the internal Apple Mac Mini 512GB SSD performs in comparison. I'm getting around 4.1GB per second write speed and 4.7GB per second read speed. That makes my external Thunderbolt 5 drive faster than what the internal SSD can deliver. And in numbers, that is 2GB per second faster in write speed and 900MB per second faster in read speed. That is really amazing. How about if you have a computer without Thunderbolt 5 though? I have an M2 MacBook Air from 2022 that features Thunderbolt 3, but the MacBook Air also supports the USB 4 standard, which the Ugreen case also supports. So let's see how well it performs on the M2 Mac. The internal SSD of my M2 Mac is also 512GB in size, like on my Mac Mini. The benchmark results are around 1.4GB per second write speed and 2.8GB per second read speed. Much slower compared to my 3 year younger Mac Mini and one of the reasons why upgrading to the M4 Pro Mac Mini was a big jump in speed for me. Now let's check out my external SSD. The Ugreen gives me around 3.2 GB per second write speed and 3 GB per second read speed on the USB 4 port of my MacBook Air. That is dramatically slower compared to the Thunderbolt 5 speeds, but it's still much faster compared to the MacBook Air internal SSD. It delivers 1.8 GB per second faster in write speed and 200 MB per second faster in read speed. You can probably get those speeds with a cheaper USB 4 external SSD. But it's good to know that you can use the Ugreen on multiple different computers and not exclusively on the Thunderbolt 5 connector. Now I was curious if my M1 iPad Pro can connect to this drive as well. Here I am plugging the Ugreen SSD case directly into my iPad Pro. And there it is! It is instantly recognized and I can access all the files I put on it without any issues thanks to the M1 iPad Pro supporting USB 4. So if you have more than one computer, you can swap this drive back and forth, as long as your computer isn't too old. And for computers that you can't upgrade, you are out of luck with this one. That is okay in my mind though, because a drive like this is for the performance hungry power user that want the fastest speeds available right now. And that's what you get with this combination of a Thunderbolt 5 SSD case and the Samsung 990 Pro. Now let's talk about heat. 
SSDs in general produce a lot of heat, and that doesn't change when you are using a USB or Thunderbolt external case for them. And with heat also comes power draw. So if you are using an external SSD on your laptop and you are running it on battery, it is a good idea to disconnect your SSD when you are not using it, like when you put your laptop to sleep. And with heat comes of course the need for cooling, else the SSD will slow down or stop working when it gets too hot. The Ugreen Thunderbolt 5 case not only cools with its entire aluminum body, it also has an integrated fan. Now I'm very touchy when it comes to noise, so how does the Ugreen perform in this regard? The fan thankfully only turns on when the SSD needs to be cooled down and turns automatically off when it's cool enough. And when the fan is running, it is actually very quiet. If you know what a mechanical hard drive sounds like when it runs idling, this is what the fan of the Ugreen sounds like. So absolutely fine. Also I noticed that when you are using a Mac, the drive will spend time getting indexed by Spotlight. So when you have your computer in sleep mode, the drive will get quite hot for some time. But after some days of use, this will actually solve itself and you will find that the SSD case will be cool to the touch when your computer is in sleep mode. Just have patience with it. Conclusion the Ugreen Thunderbolt 5 case keeps what it promises, super fast speeds that even exceeds the speed of your internal computer SSD and the speed of USB 4 external SSD drives. It is the definite speed king and a great extension of your computer's memory that will save you a lot of money because you can buy your computer with less internal SSD space and you won't be sacrificing speed going external. And since you can bring your own SSD, you can choose to put up to 8TB in the Ugreen case or opt to have a super fast SSD in it, like the one I'm using, the Samsung 990 Pro 4TB. If your workflow uses a lot of files and constantly reads and writes on your drive, investing into this case is worth it. That's it from me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more of my videos, cool tech reviews and games. It really helps me to make more content for you in the future. Until then, I will see you next time on Sam Dan's Couch. Welcome to Sam Bay.